we are looking at few questions and answers generally asked in interviews in uh, JSP that is Java Server Pages. JSP stands for Java Server Pages as uh, this is a Java technology, server technology and pages. We will try to understand how these words they are related, what they work and the how you are going to answer the question which are posed with respect to JSP. First is uh, the advantages of JSP. So the advantages is most often looked over the servlet. So JSP is a server side technology uh, to make content generation as simple as it can be. And the advantage of the plus point of JSP is that they are document centric. If you talk about servlet, they look and they act like programs, small programs. JSP can contain Java program fragment uh, that instantiate and execute the Java classes also. But these occur inside an HTML template file and these are primarily used to generate the dynamic content, right? As you might have seen in some uh, JavaScript, etc. So some of the JSP functionality can be achieved in the client and you can use it using or you can employ it using JavaScript. But JavaScript is mostly for the client side activity, but the JSP is mostly for because it is server pages. So the power of JSP is that it is based and it provides a framework for web application development. So JSP, ASP, PHP, all these are the server side scripting languages or content. What is the life cycle of JSP? See, when a request is mapped to a JSP page for the first time, it translates the JSP page into server, server class and then compile this class. So it is this servlet that services the client request or it responds to the client request. JSP page has seven phases in its lifestyle. Seven phases in its lifestyle. Uh, first is your translation then compilation, loading of the class, followed by instantiation or instantiation of the class, then the init or JSP init initialization, invocation of JSP init, then JSP service invocation, and then finally JSP destroy invocation. What is the, or what do you mean by JSP init, what it works? The JSP init method of the javax.servlet.jsp This is method you find in, in this uh, import. So JSP page interface is similar to the init method you will find in the servlet. So what this method is going to do? This method will be invoked by the container only once when a JSP page is initiated or initialized. And it can be overridden by page author to initialize resources uh, like the databases and the network connections and to allow a JSP page to read persistent configuration data. Now the second question comes after you have been asked what is the sequence. First you said that JSP init will be done then JSP service will be done. So what is, what is JSP service? Again you will find it in Java X uh, servlet.jsp. And this HTTP JSP service interface is invoked every time a new request comes to a JSP page. So this method takes the HTTP servlet request and HTTP servlet response objects as its argument. So this will have two arguments or the arguments are like HTTP server request and HTTP servlet response. But the page author can override this method and its implementation is provided by the container. What is JSP destroy? Again, you will find it in javax.servlet.jsp. So this JSP page interface is invoked by the container when a JSP page is about to be destroyed. So this method is similar to the destroy method you will find in uh, counterpart servlets. So it can be overridden by page author to perform any cleanup operation. 
because this is just try so like uh, closing uh, database connection like this what JSP lifecycle method can I overwrite so you can override the JSP service method within your JSP page you can however override the JSP init and JSP destroy method within the JSP page also JSP init can be useful for or it is in, useful for allocating resources like database connections network connections and like this for the uh, JSP page so the good programming practice is to free any allocated resources within JSP destroy how can I override JSP init and JSP destroy method within a JSP page this JSP init and JSP destroy methods these are each executed during or just once during the lifecycle of the JSP page and they are typically declared as JSP declarations like this so this is only one and how we are going to do this angular bracket you see the percent exclamation mark inside this you have a function called JSP init and similarly you have this function in the similar fashion JSP destroy what are implicit objects in JSP implicit objects in JSP these are the Java objects that this JSP container makes available to the developers in each page so these are the implicit objects so these objects need not to be declared you don't need to declare it or instantiated by the JSP author it is already there so they are automatically instantiated by the container and they are accessed using send variables that is why they are called as implicit objects so the implicit objects available in JSP they are request response page context session application out config page exception so the implicit objects these are um, actually parsed by the container and inserted into the generated servlet code so they are available only within the JSP service method and not in any other declaration what are the different types of JSP tags the tags are like this you have JSP so JSP has presentation tag JSP standard tags and custom tags so in, you can also uh, derive more of out of it like the directive tags the the standard action tags and scripted tags in the JSP standard tags in the JSP standard tags you have directory tags standard action tags and scripted tags and in the directive tags you have you know, all these dot dot means there are so many like page directive include directive tag lib directive in the standard action tags you have forward action include action use bin action likewise in scripted tags you have scripted expression tag and declaration tag what are JSP directives JSP directives these are actually messages or instructions for the JSP engine uh, that is this uh, JSP directives they serve as a message from a JSP page to the JSP container and it controls or the, it controls the processing of the entire page and then used to set the global values like the class declaration, the method implementation, output content type like, like this. So they do not produce any output to the client. And the directives are always inside your this angle bracket percent and then at the rate inside this. Like the page directive, include directory like this. What is page directive then? The question comes like this. This page directive, again, this is this informs the JSP engine about the headers or facilities that page should get from the environment and typically the page directive is found at the top of almost all of the JSP pages and uh, there can be any number of page directives within your JSP page uh, but the attribute value pair must be unique the syntax of the include directive as we just suggested would be like this with page attribute is equal to certain value like an example include file header.jsp so this is the page directive what are the attributes of page directive uh, there are 13 attributes which are defined for page directives uh, of which some certain important attributes are import 
That is, it, this import specifies the, the packages that are to be imported. Session means it specifies whether a session data is available to the GSP page. Content type, it allows the user to set the content type for a page. Is this EL ignored? It specifies whether this EL expression is ignored when a, a GSP is translated to the servlet. Now the next question is, what is the include directive? So the include directive, this is used to statically insert the content of the resource into the uh, current GSP you are talking about. And this would enable, or this enables a user to reuse the code without duplicating it. And also, it in includes the content of the specified file at the translation time. So the syntax would be like this. Angle bracket percent at the rate include file and then the file name and ending with the percent and angle bracket. So this directive has only one attribute called the file that specifies the name of the file to be included. What are JSP standard actions? The JSP standard actions or action affects the overall runtime behavior of the JSP page and also the response which is sent back to the client. So they can be used to include a file at the request time or to, to find or instantiate a Java beam, to forward a request to a new page, to generate a browser specific code like this. For example, the standard actions are include, forward, use bean, etc. What are the standard actions available in JSP? So we have just seen the standard uh, actions available in JSP. Uh, we have include, JSP include. So it includes a response from servlet or a JSP page into the current page. So it differs from an include directive how? That in that it includes a resource at request processing time. Whereas the include directive includes a resource at the translation time. So this does at the request processing time. Then we have the standard actions which are available in JSP. Even more is JSP forward. So it forwards a response from servlet or a JSP page to another page. JSP use bean. So it makes a Java bean or available to a page and instantiate the bean. JSP set property. So it sets the property for a Java bean. JSP get property. It gets the value of the property from a Java bean component and adds it to the response. JSP param. So this is used in conjunction with your forward and you know JSP or plugin to add a parameter to a request. So these parameters are provided using the name value pairs. And then we have JSP plugin. This is used to include a Java applet, say, or a Java bean in the current JSP page. So these were a few questions on JSP. We'll be taking a few more. Thank you so much. Take care.